right now police are on the hunt for two men. Newly released surveillance video shows one of the men chasing two women. You can see him pull a gun out and demand their purses, then take off. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, pals and gals. Welcome, as always, to Heck Off Kami. I always feel weird playing the intro when we're going to talk about something dark. Because, you know, I just showed you a video of my mother having her life threatened, and then it just cuts to the do-do-do, do-do-do-do, and so, you know. But it's okay. It's all fine. This happened a while ago. This was in November. No one was hurt. The suspects have been identified, and I know that the fat one, the one that actually robbed them, is in custody now. He was identified by, get this, his parole officer who saw the footage on the evening news, as we were told. And I'm going to play the full video again because there's an interview that's captured that I think does a really fantastic job at highlighting the mentality that people have about crimes like this. But first, I'll tell you the story, and then we'll go over the analysis of it as it pertains to culture and criminal behavior. And then we'll talk about the importance of both men and women arming themselves and also training for situations like these and so basically what happened was my mom and her friend went to have lunch in downtown Detroit at a popular burger place and they had to park a little ways away from the restaurant because of how crowded it gets during lunch and so they go in they have their lunch and then when they were walking back to the car this is when the incidents occurred and my mom called me right after it happened because she wanted me to get online and cancel all of her cards and this was so poorly timed because anytime my mom calls me, I always answer as a different retail employee, like just to mess with her. And so she calls me and I, of course, answer. Oh, well, thank you for calling the Home Depot Equipment Rental Center. And she's like, Johnny, I just got robbed at gunpoint. And I was like, man, this location's actually out of circular saws until Sunday. Does that work? And then she was able to convey to me that it was not a joke. And I was like, oh. And so we got online, we canceled her cards. And so all she ended up losing was like $16 in cash. And then they made a couple purchases with her cards at gas stations nearby later in the day, which of course was stupid on their part, because then the police were like, hmm, I wonder if they have security cameras like every other gas station in the continental United States. And of course they did. So buddy over here is going to prison now over $16 and some snacks, hopefully. Who knows, you know, the court's going to have to remember that he didn't do nothing, right? And that's actually most likely what's going to happen because we haven't heard anything about this case in months. You know, he's probably not going to go down for this. I mean, this guy also had warrants out for parole violation, breaking and entering, stealing weapons, and then he decides to go commit a couple more felonies. And now I'll show you the interview about this incident because I think that it captures the mentality that people have about incidents like, like this quite well. So take a look. Tonight, we spoke to a couple eating out in Corktown about this incident. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and some people, when they're desperate, they don't see any other way other than to attack someone who looks like they might be doing better than they are. I really hate that. Like, I, I really just hate that. Oh, well, desperate times call for desperate measures. Yeah, maybe in 2008. We have a million more jobs open than people looking for jobs right now. That doesn't exactly expel desperate times to me. Why can't we just accept that this guy is a societal parasite and then move from there? You know, this was in Detroit. and There's a rapper from Detroit who's become relatively popular in the last few years. He goes by the name T Grizzly. So right around the same time that this happened, T Grizzly puts out an album. And I listened to it just for the hell of it because he's from Detroit. But, you know, I usually can't stand rap music. But I like the way that he describes the way that he committed crimes and then didn't go to jail for them for as long as he thought that he would. I think that's interesting. And so um, anyways, there's a song on this album titled Get Right. And he's got this one line where he says, if an N word try to rob you, you just go in your pocket because that hunger that he feeling, bro, I know about it, which basically means that you're not entitled to keep what you've earned because other people might want it. And so he's talking about hunger, but this guy is fat. I mean, this guy is very overweight. Look at T Grizzly. Tell me if he looks like he's missed meals. And I'm not trying to make fun of him. I'm genuinely asking because he's claiming that he's going hungry and then he uses this as justification for his crimes. And the guy who robbed my mom, he's fat too. It's even documented in the description of him that he's 300 pounds. Your body isn't just going to do that. You need to maintain a very consistent caloric surplus in order to grow to that size. Like the people that you see on those shows, those TLC shows, like my 600 pound life, they're all consistently eating like 10,000 calories a day. It's insane. And I've got footage for a video that talks about the leftist myth of poverty and obesity. I haven't posted it yet, but you know, let me know if that's something you want to see in the near future. But you look at the porker that robbed my mom. Look at the size of this guy. Like the only reason he drew the gun is because he knew that my mom could probably outrun him. And my mom has a, a muscular disorder in her legs, very similar to fibromyalgia. So she, it's already very difficult for her to, to walk, let alone run, but she would have been able to escape this absolute whale of a guy. And, you know, there's no excuse for robbery. Maybe, maybe you could make a moral case for it if people were actually starving in the streets next to people that have just a superfluous amount of money. But that's not the case. No one in America is starving. This economy is booming. This guy could have gotten a job, but he chose not to. He chose to be a felon. What was the other thing that she said? Oh, well, people look like they have money. Okay. 
I don't want to make any concrete observations here, but my mom drives a 2011 Chrysler minivan. She does not wear designer clothes. She wears whatever her Kohl's cash and Macy's rewards grants her. She's not concerned about conveying status through clothes or through vehicles, but you know that little proxy Robin Hood argument that she made there. Oh, well, they got robbed because it's desperate times and they look like they're well off. First of all, the people that robbed them pulled up in a black luxury sedan. No doubt that a Blue Books is higher than the minivan. I don't even know why I'm wasting my time with this. Like We all know that this is just ridiculous. The reason that they were robbed is because there are people that exist out there who subsist off other people. These people were preying on the vulnerable, preying on people who were spending money in their city, helping their economy. Do they care? No. They're not working. Why would they care? They have no respect for or understanding of money. They don't understand that money is just a universal representation of value. They just see it as something that can grant them access to what they want. Therefore, however they get it does not matter as long as they get it. And then they went and they got $16 in cash and now hopefully a prison sentence. So uh, good job there. But I actually think that this turned out the best way that it could have. And when they first approached them, they were just asking for directions. But my mom said that she felt like something was off. And so she said that she didn't know and then tried to get back into her car. And then the car stopped and it parked. And so she told her friend to call the police because she knew something bad was going to happen. And it's very important to pay attention to your instincts like that. The instincts of your ancestors that kept them out of trouble are the reason that you're here right now today. So your instincts have been selectively bred over the course of millions of years. So it's very important to trust them. Um, men. You need to be armed. If you are a man who can legally own a gun but does not own a gun, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're too busy kissing your dad on the mouth or something? It's a very small investment to make and you would much rather have one and not need it than need it and not have it. If someone breaks into your house, you don't have time to wait for the police. And why would you even want to wait for the police so they can just bring their guns because you don't have any? As Ted Nugent says, 911 is the cleanup crew for the guy who lost. And that's unfortunate, but it's true. The iron law of nature is that you are responsible for your own safety. So take responsibility, buy a gun. I also highly recommend getting a concealed pistol license, but at the very least, you should have a gun in your house and have a plan of what to do if you need to use it, which will hopefully never happen. Men, you also need to train your women in how to defend themselves. Ideally, you would get them a concealed pistol license too. Go through the training with them, make sure that they're ready. A lot of women don't need men to teach them about guns, situational awareness, all that stuff. And that is fantastic. More power to those women. And if there are women watching that have husbands or boyfriends that don't own guns, first of all, Go tell them to stop kissing his dad on the mouth so much and then go get guns, make it a date, post about it on Instagram, whatever you want to do. But please, go arm yourselves. I want men to be armed. I want women to be armed. But I find that sometimes women aren't really interested in that. And so I'm just speaking from experience because um, let me tell you exactly what happened. So I asked my mom what she would have done in that situation had she been armed. And she said, well, I don't know. Maybe I would have put one off into the air. And I just started laughing. Like, I don't know what movie she saw, what movie she got that from. But she was just imagining herself like, bang. Hold it right there, like a warning shot or something. Just like, bang, settle down, everyone. That is, of course, not what you would do in that situation, but she doesn't know. You know, her family had guns when she was growing up. She's been shooting many times, but she just didn't have the mindset at the time. You know, if my life is in danger, there are no warning shots. You shoot to stop the threat, and you don't stop shooting until the threat is neutralized. She just doesn't know that. And so I told her that. I was very glad she didn't have a gun in that situation because she would have been shot. She would have hesitated and she would have drawn on a drawn gun and then she would have been killed. But after training, she would have known that when she was in cover on the passenger side of the van, that would have been an ideal time to draw her weapon and fix it on the back of the van because at that point, the guy didn't have his gun, his gun drawn yet um, and he was yelling at them to drop their purses and running after them so she could have very easily reacted in the situation to preserve the safety of her and her friend. And we thankfully have standard ground laws in Michigan. So I'll play the video again so you can see what I'm talking about here. Right here, so this is after he tried to get them to come up to the car. So he's parking the car, and my mom and her friend are at the front of the van, somewhat out of sight. And so my mom walks up to the back of the van to see what he's doing. She sees him getting out of the car, and then she goes back to where she was. There's a solid few seconds where she's just standing there like a deer in the headlights, and that would have been a perfect time to draw and fix her weapon on the back of the van because at this point, his weapon wasn't drawn yet, and he would have been totally caught off guard. But again, she didn't have the training to know what to do in that situation. And given that, I would say that things went about as well as they possibly could have. So here's the thing, as a man, when you find out that someone you care about was threatened, it just really activates something in your brain. It's actually a surreal feeling. Like I heard about this and my first instinct was just kill. Like the expanded thought process would be something like a T-800. Like, you know, I see everything and it's all red and then it's like, oh, uh, there's my mother, identify a woman that raised me. And then there's a man that's threatening her, calculating solution, eliminate the man. 
You know, I should clarify though, because it applies more to people that you care about, I think, that can't defend themselves. Like if I find out that one of my friends was almost shot, I would be concerned, but it wouldn't activate the same adrenaline secretion in my brain because I would just hope or assume um, that he's able to defend himself in that situation. And every man out there, I know you can all relate to this, you know, just put yourself in this position. Imagine it's your children or your mother or your sister, anyone in your life of whom you feel responsible for the preservation. And I wasn't there. That's what made me really mad is that I wasn't there, which is interesting because you would think the first thought would be, oh, I wish this hadn't happened, but it wasn't. My first thought was, I wish I was there so that I could have acted. But some women, some men even, just can't get into the mindset of my safety is my responsibility. I need to be prepared to act. And so the point that I'm making is that if you have someone like that in your life, you should encourage them to accept that responsibility or at least accept their safety as part of your responsibility by arming yourself. If you haven't already, though, I sincerely hope that you already have. And so I'm going to make a recommendation here. I'm not an expert by any means. Uh, this is not a gun review channel. I'm not sponsored. I'm not looking to start a debate in the comment section, but I recommend this to my mom. I really like it. It's a Smith & Wesson um, M&P Shield 2.0 uh, single stack 9mm. It's very thin. It doesn't print as easily, which is good because my mom and most women, I think, typically wear um, clothes that are too tight for something like a Glock 19. or And a lot of people, oh, well, what about the Glock 43? But it's got just 6 plus 1 capacity, which I don't like. This pistol has 8 plus 1 with the extended magazine. And it fits perfectly in my hand. It's extremely reliable and accurate. I only paid like 320 for it when I bought it. They improved the trigger and the grip a lot since the first model. So like I said, it's the 2.0. I really like this pistol. You don't have to buy a pistol. You could get different types of guns. Some are, some are more expensive, some are cheaper. But the point is that if you are legally able to make, say, a $300 investment in your safety into the safety of your family, you should do that immediately because there's nothing noble about being a victim. Someone tried to kick down our door one time. I was 17 and I remember I just grabbed a hammer from my room that I had because I was putting together an Ikea desk or something and I was just waiting there you know for this guy to enter so I could just go full jump man on him but I was so pissed off because I'd been telling my mom I was like get a gun get a gun get a gun she's like oh maybe and so now there's a guy trying to break in at two in the morning and I'm just sitting here in my underwear holding a hammer just hoping that he didn't bring a hard hat it was just not a fun situation to be in and maybe your police department is great I think ours is decent but sometimes you just aren't so lucky you know the lady asked me when I called, if the guy got into the house, I said, well, no, he stopped trying. And she was like, okay, good. That's a, that's nice. Well, do you need anything else from us? And I was like, well, I don't know. You know, if you wouldn't mind sending an officer out, that would be nice. And she actually gave me a hard time about it since, oh, well, there's no more threat present, so we can't do anything. So, you know, the average response time is about 10 minutes. Obviously, it'll vary based on where you live, but it takes seconds for someone to enter your house and become a threat to your life. Sometimes they even try to, you know, kill everyone quietly, then open the door and let everyone else in so that they can loot the house without having to worry about police. And you don't want that. I don't want that. Buy a gun. Get training. Be responsible. Be safe. If you already have guns, buy more of them. Stimulate the gun market so that other people can buy guns too. Hopefully, you never have to use it, but at least now you'll have peace of mind knowing that if you ever needed to, you could defend yourself and those that you care about. Hey guys, if you like this video, I need you to do a couple things for me. First, give it a thumbs up. Second, leave it a comment with your thoughts on the best concealed carry pistol. Third, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Also, turn on post notifications so you get notified when I post. It makes sense because you know, they're censoring us over here, so that's important. But, you know, I'm not going to pretend that this is the best concealed carry pistol, but I think it's easily top 10. I really like everything about it, except the only thing I would say is that the magazines are too expensive. Um, I think the extended magazine is like $25. So that's, you know, what are you going to do? So thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.